Okay. Hello guys. So in our previous video, we saw that we got to this point where we can see some data on the dashboard, but uh, some of the data is very static here and let's convert it into some actual data that we can get from our Shopify store. So what I've done here is I've opened up the customer API reference that Shopify has. And uh, if we take a look at the resource, then there are some fields that are present here. Addresses, currency, created at, and et cetera, et cetera. Email, first name, ID, and all that. So what we want to do is take these fields and save it in our database for our local usage. So let's do that. So first we will do PHP artisan make model customers minus M. So that will give us the migration along with the model. So let's do that something protected. This and after that, let's go to the migration file. So here's the migration. I will change this to big increments table ID. I don't want to confuse this with the ID column that already Shopify provides us right here. So that is why I prefer a different name and that will take care of uh, the data type. So what I want to do here is table arrow integer or do I want to do float? Uh, big integer is fine. So big integer ID. Then I want to do table. Big integer store ID. This will serve as the foreign key in our stores table. Okay, so for the customer's in information, I will take only these many columns. There are more columns available here if you want to do it. And addresses will be an array, so you can have a different table for storing the addresses. And there's a default address, which will contain only one object, so you can JSON stringify it and save it. Let's actually do that. So table, long text, we will do default address and I'll keep it nullable. Yeah, so this should be good for the customers. Let's do the same for the product. And let's do the same for orders. Okay, so now that the migrations are created and the models are created, let's uh, quickly Copy this right here. And paste it here also. So what I will do from now is uh, for the product information, I will look at the product base APIs and I will take a look at one of these, which is a list of products. So here we have the same thing, ID, title and body HTML and all that. So I will create columns with the same name and I will create the migrations. So let me create those migrations and I'll uh, continue from there. Okay. So now I have created all the columns that were needed. For orders, for the orders model, I took uh, some more columns that I needed just to have it. Uh, if you wish to reduce these columns, uh, please go ahead. And for the products, um, I took this long text as for the body HTML, variants, options, and images. So what I will do is uh, on the products API, we can see that uh, these are JSON based data that Shopify will give. So I will JSON encode it. And uh, if you look here, yeah. The variants. It is an array. So what I will do, I will uh, JSON encode it and I will keep it my, in my database. So that's why I have kept it uh, long text. What you could do is create another table for the variants and you can link it with the product table ID. So in my case, I'm not going to do that. 
and I have run PHP artisan migrate. So now I have these tables here products, uh, orders, and customers. So our tables are now created. What we could do is uh, inside our code, let's uh, do something about this. So I can show some counts of uh, orders here, customers here, and products here. Uh, I'm sorry. So I can show number of orders here. I can show the revenue of the orders and I can show the number of customers. So let's do that. So in our home controller, what we could do equals this get dashboard payload. And inside that I will pass user and store variable. This uh, store variable is coming from the user function, user model, where I have defined a get Shopify store and I have used a has one method. And above it, I have included it uh, in the width array. So every time the user gets loaded, then this relationship is invoked and the data is kept for us to use. So that's what we are going to do. And in home, I will simply pass it. Now let's define this dashboard payload function. So I can just do this right here. So now I have yeah after writing try catch let's do return simple array orders count we will do oh i'm sorry i have to link it uh first i have to, in the okay so if we see dsc customers then the store id column is here so i need to define a relationship between the stores table and the customers table so what i will do i will simply go to the store model and i will define a function here public function get get customers and also i will define public function get orders and after that i will do public function get products so inside that i can write this as many customer class and i can say store id comma table id so let's copy that and i can say order class and then i can say product class so this will take care of uh, of the foreign key relationships So inside that I can say orders count store get orders count then I can say orders revenue store get orders sum of total price then I can say customers count I should uh, define a variable here so I can say orders equal orders and I can say if not found then take zero 
then I can do order sum total price and if that is not found then take zero and if uh, customers are not found then take zero so let's go with uh, this basic array right here So in our home dot blade, let's make some changes. So let's search for sales. Let's see where it shows. Yeah, here we go. So let's dis disable this span class and just show. orders count right here let's close out some files yeah So let's now show our orders revenue. And after that, let's show customers. Yeah, spellings are all correct. Then yeah, this should work. So if I comment this out and let's comment this out. Yeah. So let's come back here and refresh. Yeah. Now it shows zero, zero, zero everywhere. So this is fine. Then sales. Let's remove that. Let's remove this month and let's remove this year. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, now it seems simple. Um, for these filters, we can work on it later. But let's uh, leave it for now. So, now that we have this uh, little dynamic here, so let's write some logic to fetch the data from Shopify store and store it in our database for our local usage. So let's do that. So on the orders page, I want to provide a button that says sync orders and clicking on it will uh, pull all the data and keep it in our database. Same thing I want to do for products and customers. So let's do that. Okay. So taking the template that I had and I took some elements from here and I created some pages here for the orders products and customers so if I click here then I see this heading right here and this button for syncing the products right here and for orders the same thing and for the customers the same thing but the data here is quite static so let's write the logic for syncing the values from Shopify store and showing it here itself so that will be a video so a next video so what i will do here is for the sync orders i will just simply say href equals orders dot sync and let me copy this right here and for the products i will paste it here And for the customers index, I will also paste it here. Yeah. 
So now they are pointing to an actual endpoint and let's create these endpoints here. So inside that I can say route prefix sync and I can group it. Then I can say route get sorry customers as Shopify controller class and I can say sync customers and I can name it customers dot sync. Yeah, let's copy it and I'll paste it two more times. So where we say customers, let's say orders. And for this, we can say products. So now we have three routes that are concerned with syncing um, the data from Shopify. So let's uh, define these. So for these three routes, we can make jobs for it. Make job Shopify slash sync slash product. And then we can see that in our jobs in Shopify in sync, we have product. So let's do the same thing for order. And let's do the same thing for customer. So in these three jobs, I will write the logic for actually making the API call and uh, pulling the data from Shopify store and putting it in our database. And uh, for these routes, I might have to write database query for uh, reading this data and showing it on the UI. So I will dedicate a simple video for that. Um, I think we are enough, good enough to for this video. I'm sorry. So I have to do PHP art and optimize. Yeah. So now I can say, yeah, now it is working. So on dashboard, we have set this zero, zero, zero. So when the data is already there, then it can sync it and show it here. And for the reports, uh, we can do something here. And I think we'll remove this, uh, these things from here. So website traffic, we don't need top selling. We don't need news updates. We don't need. So we'll delete these things in the next video. Okay, see you there.